Okay, that's enough, buddy. You just hold it right there. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Come on, let's go. Let's forget it. I want my coat and then get out of here. Vida say. Vida say. Come on. Come on. Don't you think this is enough? Forget it. If I were you, I would throw him out. But you're not me. Don't understand how we can stand it. No, but don't you understand. I, I don't. I don't care if you're a girl. I'll punch you right in the mouth. Oh, please, we stop it. Get up. Don't pay any attention to him. Come on, Hildegard. Peter's waiting for you. Sometimes I wish I understood you, Rhys. Why? Because I want to help you. I don't need help. Yes, you do. What? You do need help, Rhys. The way you acted, the way you treated anybody, it wasn't normal. I don't know, you know... You... You get born, you grow up, you go to school, you go in the army. And if you're not killed, you raise a family. The kids leave you as fast as they can. And then you're alone. And then two weeks before you retire, you die. I don't want that. What I am, you know, it's not so good, but it's not so bad either. I won't let you alone, Reese. Private James H. Reese? Mm -hmm. Did some girl get hurt here tonight? Is that what she said? Get in a uniform, soldier. You're wanting out the base for questioning. Look, you're coming at a very bad time, see? I'm inside with a young lady. I don't care if you're in bed with a four-star general. Let's go. I can't come with you now. Don't put your hand come on, on me. Let's go. You must be in a great deal of pain. Oh, no, sir. I don't believe in pain. On moral grounds. Oh, yeah, is that right? What's your moral position on being arrested, smartass? Can we keep this conversation on a more personal... Shut up. Sign these papers. Look, I'm a simple man. I have simple wants. Just put me in a cast. Tell me to stop. Nobody's going to set your arm until you're officially admitted. So sign, troop. You know, you're kind of cute when you're pissed off. Sign. 
With your record of arrests, you've run out of choices. Sign. And so, Mr. Rees, you say you plan to stay up all night? Oh, yes. I stay up every night. I pray. What for? I pray with the sun to rise. It's my belief that if I didn't pray all night, the sun wouldn't come up. I don't do this for myself, you see. I do this for everyone. And it's a fact that every time I pray all night, the sun comes up. How long have you done this um, nightly ritual? I used to do it just once in a while to keep in shape, you know. But It's a family thing. And now that I'm the only one left, the torch of the world has fallen to me, and so I must do it every night. Unless, of course, my eldest son, if I should ever have one, would take over for me. Hello. Hello. How are you? Just fine. But you are. I think that MP will want to take it home with him. Oh. A souvenir of our lovely evening together. Tell me, Reese, what kind of place is this? Is it a hospital or is it a prison? Oh, it's a wonderful place. They take your x-rays, they put you in your cast on the first floor. And they take you to the second floor where this weird man says thing like aggravated assault. Then they bring you up here. They incarcerate you. And they throw away the key. Have you seen all these silly men out there? Pretending they know who you are? I mean, they think you're... they think you're mad. They think you're a criminal. It's just like Hildegard. They think you, you hit her and you won't tell them the truth. You're yeah, okay. I'll clear it all up. I know you won't. I'm serious, Reese. Don't be. It doesn't become you. And it's boring. What? Boring. I think you're just unhappy. I was attracted by that for a while. But I don't know anymore. Lisa, you remember that man we saw in Frankfurt? The mentally retarded man who just kept smiling while everybody around him was screaming? Yeah. Well, he was happy. He was sick. <clears throat> That's hard to tell after this sort of undirected conversation. Sounds articulate, reasonably complex. This record of arrests certainly adds an interesting note to the proceedings. All in all, I'd say he sounded promising. I'd like to investigate him further, if I might. Certainly. I think you have found an excellent candidate in this Reese fella. He's been a constant offender, quite obviously sociopathic. Wouldn't you say? Yes, and incipient signs of schizophrenia as well. There's no doubt in my mind. He fits your profile exactly. Well, this sure is a nice car. They make you guys walk a beat before they give you a nice car like this? You know, I used to want to be an MP when I was six. And you guys keep order, you arrest people. You bring the guilty to justice. That's a hell of a thing, bringing the guilty to justice. I wish I was an MP. Geez, I hate to bitch, but it's awful lonesome here in the back seat. I don't suppose I can climb up front with you fellas. No? I don't think so. Well, it's better than being in the trunk, right? Right? Oh, yeah, right. Whoops, you made a wrong turn there, MP. That's not the way to the stockade. You're taking me to the stockade, aren't you? the Mutual Beneficial Insurance Company, Incorporated. You're a family man, you're probably asking yourself, if a werewolf fit me, would my wife be properly taken care of? Bye. 
Can we stop the car? I have to go wee wee. Whoops, never mind. Yeah, I really enjoy talking to you like this. Name's Shannon. Corporal Lawrence Shannon. I'm head orderly here. Where's here? Okay, Reese, in here. Checking in Private Reese. Hey, Reese. Over here. It's a nice setup you have here. Show Private Reese to the ward. Okay, Reese, this way. Nurse? Excuse me, nurse. Would you mind telling me where I am? Certainly. You're standing four feet in front of me, flagrantly disobeying my order that you go to the ward. Well, thank you. I was wondering where I was. Hey, Reese. This way. Oh! What's that? Suspense. Look, just stay cool and don't make waves. You keep something in mind, buddy. You cause trouble here, I can mess you up real good. See how we scream like that? I'll never make a wake. Okay, Reese. Lieutenant Rhodes. Hey, Rhodes. Private Reese. How do you do? Reese. Sergeant Miles. Hello. Bathroom to that door there. Sure. That's your bed there. Okay. Now get undressed. The nurse will be down and take your temperature and do all those things that nurses do. Sure, right away. I just want to relax a minute. You know, cast myself in my new surroundings. <laughs> That's an order. I don't want nurse shoulder on my back so you get undressed. Right. Okay. Right. I give him something. Well, it ain't time yet. Hell, he ain't due for another job. Ooh. I'm now, now. Place hell with the TV. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, can we give you a hand getting undressed or something? No, uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. It will be good to have someone to talk to for a change. Tommy, there, you ain't much conversations anymore. Oh, neither am I. Oh, well, you get used to that once the shock wears off. Then when it first sprung it on me, hell, I didn't say a word to nobody for a solid week. Too busy drinking and screwing. <laughs> well, what shock is that? Oh, you know, when they first tell you you're a corpse, dead man. <laughs> All I got is a broken arm. You had your complete physical yet? Mm hmm. Uh-huh. And what doctor did they sign you? Frederick. <laughs> well, that's our doctor, too, buddy boy. Me and old Tom. Yeah. You see, Tommy's got a hole about this big in his intestines. And I can guess to the month when I ain't gonna have any lungs left. Yeah. Yeah. Used to be a fella in here looked a lot like you. Came in with his leg in a cast. Croaked the leukemia. Not a bad way to go. Not as bad as Tom's. How come his head is bandaged? You said he got it in the intestines. I have intestines up my head. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> hey, Tommy, you been peeing out your ear lately? 
<laughs> I used to know a couple of girls like that. So how come his head is bandaged? I don't know. Go ask Doc Frederick. <laughs> Relax. That's just his hour tone. About half past, we get two quick screams. Yeah, this place is a lot of laughs. And there's only one way out. I doubt that. Hey. Why'd you do that? You were watching it. Okay, Reese. Suit yourself. See, when old Tommy ain't screaming, there just ain't no place in the world more quiet than this room. You really know how to turn a phrase, don't you? How long you been here? Who counts? I'm more interested in how long I got left. Oh, excuse me, the creeps. Oh, relax, boys. Hey. Well, why can't we have a private room? The place is big enough. <laughs> Privacy's the last thing you want, kid. Hey, we should not talk with the kid. And I don't need all the parental advice. Now, you better keep head, sonny. But for both our sake, just shut up. Okay? Don't put me in a crib like this. Excuse me. <laughs> Hell, you got the wrong attitude, Reese. You know that? We're the elite. We get all kind of preferential treatment. Baby, we're showpieces. Hey, speaking of pieces, Reese, where do you get a load of this little Red Cross girl comes around and plays checkers with me? She's got hearts for my body. <laughs> <laughs> Someday me and that little Red Cross girl gonna do a hell of a lot more and play checkers, I guarantee you. <laughs> Can't you give him a shot? Yeah, do it for another 45 minutes. Why haven't you been drinking your pink lemonade? Screw the pink lemonade. You think I caught this flop around for my health? I ain't drinking any more of that piss. Drink it and beg for more. And this stuff's for fever. Hey, don't you give me a hard time too, Chief. That's my boy. Yes, sir, 18 years of med school. It was worth it. Cause now he makes the best friggin' pink lemonade on the block. Ah! Give me a shot, you creep. You ain't through yet. Give me a shot. Got another 45 minutes. Get the nurse. Uh, nurse, to give him his injection. Doctor, he's not ready. Get the nurse to give him his injection. When he's fully under, I want to move, to move carefully to room D, understood? Right. Indeed. How's it going, Miles? Oh, still kicking, Doc. You know, I'm up to four packs a day. I'd trade all the peanuts in the world for one taste of the old hair of the dog and bit me. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell, Doc, even a condemned man's entitled to one last smoke. See, I... I hate to break this up, but if when you have a minute. What is it you want, Reese? How about some information? Am I dying? You have a broken arm. No, I know that, but am I going to die from it? No, you're not. And why am I here? Yeah, why is he here, this naughty son of a bitch? And why can't I have a private room? Oh, you can do it with a little company. You call this company? Oh, it's what you make it. How long am I going to be here? Look, uh, Reese, uh, We'll have a chat about it later, right now, I have things to do, excuse me. Hey, wait a minute. Did you see that? See how he ducked out of here? There's something funny about that guy. I sensed it. I sensed it right from the start. Well, you don't take much to anybody, do you? Go with your peanuts, lifer. 
Hey, you want to know something, boy? Hmm? I'm about ready to ram that cast halfway up your ass. Okay, Miles, let's just drop it, okay? Say, I'll bet you're a college boy, ain't you? I went there. When did you used to stay? English. <laughs> English. <laughs> Hey, where you been? Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Dr. Frederick, Congresswoman Johnson. It's a pleasure. And of course, Congressman Weston, whose committee has been very generous with funds for our project. Doctor, I, uh, I'm over here because I've heard rumors that there have been setbacks. <laughs> well, I hesitate to doubt the source of your rumors, but I can assure you, as Army observer and coordinator of this project, each step Dr. Frederick and his staff and I modestly admit myself, have taken. Each step has been a forward one. Doctor, when can we expect to be able to present your findings to Congress? I'm a scientist, Mr. Weston, not a long distance runner. How soon, Doctor? You know, I bet this place is really something to see in the old days, huh? Yeah. What is this place? Yeah, where I get it from, uh, 
Shannon, that's a punk orderly. This place used to belong to a big German field marshal, you know. Bachelor kind of guy. The army had always spent his whole life, so when he died, he left the army his mansion. Now the army's got it. How many patients they got here? Oh, let's see. That's just a rough estimate, you understand. But I'd say uh, three. Three? Yeah. You, me, and Tommy. So to be really accurate, you'd have to say uh, two and a half. Because you see, Tommy ain't half the man he used to be. <laughs> he ain't half the man he used to be. <laughs> well, that struck me kind of funny, you know. Hey, hey, you know, it's weird, Reese. Nowadays, the damnest things just tear me up. Hey, uh, ain't right, is it? I mean, in my condition. You ever laugh much? No. No. I didn't think so, somehow. Why? Hmm. Boy, you sure as hell shrug a lot. I bet that old cast kind of cramps your old style, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, you got any brothers and sisters? I don't know. You don't know if you got any brothers and sisters, huh, college boy? What do you care? Well, now that you're missing it, I don't give a damn. One way or the other, just trying to make a little conversation, you know? Now, where are you going? Hey, those woods are off limits. Hey, Reese, don't turn your back on me. I've, I've seen those dogs work before. Just uh, back up slow. Talk to him. Oh, yeah. good dog. Yeah. That's a dog. Looks kind of like a Shannon, doesn't he? Hey, so easy, huh? Just nice. Right away, you're back. Oh, dog. Easy. <laughs> you should have seen your face. What do you mean? I wasn't scared. Come on, dog. Let's go. I'll punch your face. I'm being scared. Hey, wait a minute. What's with the fence and the dogs? to break in here, do they? Right. Miles, did you notice the barbed wire up on top of that fence, on the brackets, pointing in like this? Yeah. Well, if they wanted to keep people out, it'd point out, and the dog, they patrol the area by the inside area. What is this place, Auschwitz? Yeah. Ladies, men, these are two of our patients, Sergeant Beaufort Miles, Private James Reese. Well, men, how is life treating you? Oh, no complaints? No. Well, that's the first time I've ever heard of soldiers without any complaints. Well, we make it our business to keep our patients as happy and comfortable as possible. I'd like to ask you a question. What about... Uh, we'll have plenty of time for that later. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Uh, we'll talk after dinner. You see that guy? He ducked out on me again. What do you got against Frederick? I like him. I don't know, Miles. You got to think about that man. Well, he ain't just no uh, pill doctor, you know. He's some uh, kind of shrink, too. Yeah, he's some kind of creep, too. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something, buddy boy. Well, he knows a lot about brains, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Hey, you take old Tommy, for instance. One day, Frederick comes into the ward. And Tommy's hurt. I mean, he is really hurt. So Frederick uh, takes him by his hand, you know. Sort of like he's a woman. And he says to Tommy, he said, Would you like me to make it stop hurting? Tommy sort of sniffles, said he'd appreciate it, you know? So the doctor says, the hurts in your head, Tommy, not just Tommy. 
And old Tommy just says, yes, sir. Just like that. And me? I said, Doc, are you ever full of shit? But not Tommy. Then, you see, I figured it in. He's gonna hypnotize him or something like that. But he didn't, did he? He opened his head. So it looks that way, don't it? <laughs> Miles, I want to ask you a question. I'm trying to line up a shot. Do you mind? I want to ask you about Rhodes. What? You're pretty good friends with him, right? Yeah. Excuse me. Well, has he acted any differently since they worked on his head? Can't say that I know. It seems to hurt about as bad as ever. Did Frederick say anything more about what he'd done to him? No. Come on, man, think. Did he say anything about removing pressure on his brain, anything like that? Now, why is he going to say anything to me? Think I'm going to understand what he's talking about? Probably not. Well, I ain't so goddamn sure you would either. Yeah! Yeah! Don't push me. That's why you're afraid of him. Oh, guys like you, you don't worry about getting beat up or nothing like that. No, you can talk your way out of most spots. But let someone come along who's got a few more smarts than you, and you goddamn near have kittens. Or me? I don't worry about looking dumb. Okay, okay, maybe I don't have no college education or nothing like that, but let me tell you something, son. I went to the toughest school of all. I went to school of hard knocks, right? Uh, from the teeming tenements, yeah, didn't we all? Yeah? Listen, Miles, it's okay if you don't like me. Oh, well, wipe my ass. Boy, you really are something, aren't you? Well, we don't have much in common, do we? Except maybe Frederick. What is this thing you got about Frederick? Use your head, Beaufort. I don't trust the man. Well, I do, old buddy. Have to trust him with your life? Old oh, buddy? You know, when I was a kid, I used to know someone like you. Yeah, yeah, this kid, if we ever got in a dark room, see, something like that, he'd always go real tense and he would say, hey, do you hear that? And everybody else always supposed to listen up real close, you know, and say, no, what? The only thing was, see, this goddamn kid, he's always making the whole thing up. Gave him a big charge, you know, to hear things that weren't there. But I cured him of that. One day we was in this dark room, I called me, and he says, hey, do you hear that? And I turned and I built the crap out of him. No, I said. Do you feel that? Okay, Miles. Okay. Okay. Ask me if I'm married. Come on, come on, come on. Ask me if I'm married. been divorced. Eight years. Uh, think of something else. You ever have any visitors? I never have any visitors. Uh, no. Just a Red Cross girl. <laughs> I think they pay her to see me. <laughs> No relative, none like that. Yeah. You 
It's, uh... It's lonely here. I never thought I'd die lonely. Oh! What kind of bullshit am I spouting? You know what's wrong with me? I'm horny as a three-ball toad, that's why. <laughs> I need a woman, any woman. I don't care if she's toothless and crippled and wearing a glass eye. I'll take her. <laughs> Sometimes I go a little crazy just thinking about it, you know. <laughs> I reckon not having a woman's about the worst thing in the whole world. <laughs> One thing, you know. Silence. Not having someone to talk to. You know, lately I've caught myself talking to TV. <laughs> Silence ain't good for a goddamn thing. It took roads. Got nobody. That narrows it down to us, doesn't it? You. Me. Frederick. I thought we agreed on later. What are you planning to do with me? You must lead a very dull life, Private Reese. But you apparently have to weave mystery into it at every turn. Well, for Christ's sake, I break my arm. They throw me in a ward with terminal cases. With guards and dogs. Barbed wire fence. They put me in charge of a brain doctor. That's what you are, isn't it? Is it taking overactive imagination for that to seem strange? Then there's Tommy Rhodes. Now, there's a man with a hole in his intestines. And that poor bastard's laying there with his head taped up. Now, what, what am I supposed to make of that? Those mysterious bandages represented nothing more than an experimental technique designed to stop pain at its source. Which was, of course, the brain. I said again. You said what? Yes, I did. Rhodes died on the operating table ten minutes ago. How? How did he die? Did you kill him? Did you really take a dying man and put the finishing touch on him by fooling with his brain? Let me tell you something about Rhodes. That boy was coherent enough not only to understand that I was trying to ease his death, that I could turn it into something meaningful. He knew that the same techniques that I applied to him could be used to spare others agony. That they might lead to a cure for many ills, including schizophrenia. Oh, you're wonderful. You're just wonderful. You are a very small man, Mr. Rees. And you're obviously some kind of colossus. So I'm sure you'll understand why I want to keep out from underfoot. In fact, if I had my way, I'd have me a doctor that didn't know shit about brains. <laughs> hey, buddy, you okay? Yeah. Who's Benson? Remind me to tell you about her before I die. Already. Morning. You've been here all night, haven't you? Why don't you go to get some rest now? Perfectly positioned. If you found information in the hypothalamic area, I don't understand. Yeah, the amperage level might not have been excessive yet. It was well within the gradient limits. Oh, very, Doctor. I'm sure you haven't been eating breakfast. Those gradients are established for healthy patients. In view of the debilitation of the subject, isn't it possible? 
You did everything you could. Nevertheless, Rhodes is dead. I'm well aware of that, Doctor, but I see no reason to dwell on it. Aren't you at least interested in the cause of death? He was all but clinically dead before we began. If he had lived, you might have been able to benefit him immensely. No. If we can be faulted for anything, it is simply that our choice of subject was injudicious. Injudicious. But we don't have that many to choose from. Where are all the schizophrenics the Major promised you? After all, that is what we're here for, isn't it? Is it? There's Miles. Oh, yes. Miles, at least, is still relatively healthy. And Reese. Mr. Miles? Oh, my goodness. Where is everybody? Where's Tommy Rhodes? I'm away. Oh, they took him away, I see. And the incorrigible Mr. Miles? Taking a crap. Then I shall see him shortly, I presume. And you are? I'm in a foul mood and I don't want to play games. Of course. Do you mind if I sit down very quietly and wait for Mr. Miles? You can't imagine how much he looks forward to his checkers. Can't imagine what else he's looking forward to. Let's sit down. Wait. I don't care. Thank you. Uh, I've got some nice cookies here. This is garbage. Matter of taste. What do you like to read, Mr. Uh... Business. Well, I'm afraid you're mistaken there. It is precisely my business to know exactly what you like to read. What sort of games you like to play and what kind of cookies you're fond of eating. It's my business to make this room seem larger. I'm upsetting you. I could just go away for a while and I could come back later to see Mr. Miles. Good idea. Did you just find out? Find out what? I haven't found out anything. The longer I'm here, the less I find out. Look, Miss, uh, what? Krauss, Miss Anna Krauss. Sometimes known as Florence Nightingale. Although I, I find that cliché increasingly tiresome. Well, look, Florence, you've got you to gotta distribute your professional sympathy more efficiently. You know, you can't waste it on me. Your eyes are all puffy. Are you in pain? Yes, I am. Right here. <laughs> I just insulted you. You're so stupid you don't get it. But can you make babies? Yes, of course I can. Then why don't you go do that? Hey, 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 what's going on here? Oh, what's this punk doing to you, Anna? in the war today. She depresses me.
Oh, hey now. No reason to be depressed. Not with me around. You just swallow this down. What's the pill for? Set your head right, baby. I ain't any dope. Go on, take it. Free trial offer. If you like, next time we do business. If not, well, it never happened. What is that? You don't know it. It's perfectly safe for babies and small dogs and things, non-habit forming, no harmful side effects. Never mind, Reese. I just thought I'd do you a favor. No, wait, 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 wait a minute, huh? Will it, uh... Will it calm me down? Chief, not even God will scare you. Why are you doing this? Because I hate to see somebody eating his guts out the way you've been doing. Brings me down, you know? Besides, I have faith in a product. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> He'll make you happy, and I'll make me happy. Huh? Now, what do you want to talk to me about? Rhodes, right? Rhodes. He's dead. So? Last time you saw him, would you exactly call that being alive? It wasn't so much what he said as his cynicism, sneering at the very idea of people helping one another. Well, there's nothing funny about that, is there, Mr. Miles? Loving thy neighbor? Oh, I reckon not. I mean, where would we be if we couldn't love one another? Yes, ma'am, I'm a firm believer in love. It's my fault, really. When somebody tries to hurt me like that, so coldly and deliberately hurt me, I can see that he's really just trying to reach out. I can see that he hurts a lot worse on the inside where you can't see it. Yeah, the inside hurt, old oh, man. What are you doing? Dear, this must be one of those days. Thank you very much, Mr. Miles, for listening to me, but I've got to be going now. No, you don't. Well, unless you'd like to play some checkers. Checkers and pink and lemonade, I had enough of that. You know what I need, Anna? I need love. I know you do, poor man, but that's not in my contract. Now, please. I'll be dead in a month. Now, don't say that. It's not true. You know it is. No one to grieve for me. I'll grieve for you. I'll grieve for all of you. But you'll just grieve for me as a dead patient. You won't grieve for me as a man. I will. I promise. I will. Make my last hours a little more comfortable, won't you, Anna? It's so lonely here. I'll treat you good. I know. I know. You want to? You know you do. No, I don't. No, please. No, please. Stop it. You don't love me. Oh, but I do, and I love you. Too. No, you don't. You don't love me because I'm too fat. Fat girls turn me on. Oh, please, no. Now, you listen to me, you little... There are two ways you can have it. And you can have it nice. Or you can have it nice and rough. Just take your pick, because me, I don't care. Now, don't make me talk tough, okay? Okay. Okay, maybe, maybe I don't love you. But I like you. And that's the truth. And I'm not going to hurt you. And don't be frightened. You don't have to tell me. I can sense the vibes. Phil's working. 
Dynamite! <laughs> <laughs> Better living through chemistry. <laughs> I learned that in NAM. For my 12 months, we're up. I asked for a transfer here. And you brought your little medicine bag along. You said it. Play the game. Smile at the big boys and keep out of trouble. Sounds easy. If you wised up, you'd have it better. Well, believe me, buddy, I'm as hot-headed as you are, but I've learned. Don't swim upstream. <sighs> uh, I gotta get back to the ward. I'm not supposed to leave Miles alone too long. Frederick wants me to kind of keep an eye on him. Oh, no, 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 man. You don't want to do that. You don't want to watch Miles this afternoon. He needs a little privacy. You know. Just him and Miss Krause. But he's privacy when he play checkers. Come on, Shannon. Give him a break. She's been hot after Miles for months now. <laughs> Today he's finally going to give in. <laughs> that pill must be stronger than I thought. Hey, Krause, I've never been hot for anything in a whole life. No, no, man. Miles told me. She makes passes at him all the time. Uh -huh. That's right. Hey, you better check your reality testing mechanism, kid, because poor old Miss Krause never made a pass at anything, period. She's a terminal virgin. Miles had made a pass at her, she'd crack like an old plate. There'd be pieces of her mixed all over the ward with the checkers. And if Miles ever messes with her, there'll be pieces of him all over the ward, too. You understand? I'm not kidding. What's the matter? Can't you take a joke? Hey, Reese! Where are you going? Hey, Reese! What are you staring at? Women just can't resist you, can they? <laughs> not for long. I should say not. Well, you're more than a match for even a little red cross work, aren't you? What are you going to do about it? I haven't decided yet. What do you think she's going to do? Nothing. Just forget about it, just like that. Yeah. What else are you going to do? You'd be too embarrassed to tell anybody about it. Did you hurt her? I don't know. Forgot to ask. You think she'll be back? Who, Anna? Who cares? That the first girl you ever raped? Now look, knock off about it, will you? It's over and done with. What's it like? The more exciting than she can say? Look, goddammit. I asked you real nice to drop the subject. I ain't gonna ask you again. Shamed? You better shut up. You're a coward! A stupid coward! You're a stupid, gutless coward! Let me go, you! One arm, you! One arm, you stupid coward! Let me up! Coward? You stupid coward! <laughs> Day for you, in a mile. Oh. 
Bet you wondered plenty of times why we had you here, huh? Bet you had yourself all psyched into thinking everybody was making a big mistake, didn't you? Huh? <laughs> How long? With extensive surgical care. Proper application of certain drugs. Maybe half a year. Yeah, well, if you just sat back and didn't mess with me, how long? Well, what can I say? Maybe a couple of months. Do you feel we have misled you in any way? Encouraged you to build false hopes because if so... No, no, no. So, I lay around and let you squeeze a few more days out of my eyes, is that it? Putting it right aboard for him. That's it, just the same, huh? Beautiful. Just beautiful. Well, I ain't going like Tommy Rhodes, you hear? I ain't going out whimpering and screaming and begging for medicine, pleading for shots from that. Quarterly. There is an alternative. I'm engaged in a project of some significance. You can help if you like. This is a piece of 31 gauge Teflon stainless steel wire. I want to put it in your brain. I gotta admit, Doc, the whole thing sounds pretty wild, but, uh, digging around inside my head. Uh-uh. No. It might help with Benson. Who told you about that? Nobody knows about that. Nobody. It might, might help you to sleep easier at night, Miles. Believe me, you're going to want all the sleep that you can get. Tell me about Benson. Benson. Benson, 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 Benson. Tell me. In the war. During the war. Who's your buddy? Yes. No. No, he wasn't. I didn't like him very much. He was colored. That ain't why I did it. I mean, that ain't it at all. It was instinct, almost. It wasn't me, hardly. What did you do, Miles? We was scrunched down in this shell crater sort of thing. Just a cut in the ground. And I looked over and he... I don't... I don't know what happened. I looked over in his direction, and I saw it, a grenade, a live grenade. I don't know what happened. It wasn't me that did it. You pushed him. fell on top of it, and it, uh, uh, blew him apart. I wasn't even scratched. When I made it back to the platoon, I, I told him about Benson. I didn't tell it the way it happened. I said that he jumped to save me. They gave him the Medal of Honor. Miles. I'm giving you a way out. I'm giving you a chance to do one decent thing in your life. I can't stop you from dying. But I can give you a 
death a little meaning, a little dignity. Bunch of, bunch of strangers leaning over you, measuring your heart, beating your brain waves like you're some kind of 200 pound rat. Is that the way you want it? Talk to me, you son of a bitch. Let me sleep. No, I won't. I want you to wake up. I want you to listen to me. I want you to let you lay, lay around jiggling your nuts for the rest of your life. Come on. Don't you care about anything anymore? No. Same thing they're gonna do to you. Oh, you've known about it all along. Why else you've been so shit-eyed scared? I'm perfectly healthy. They can't take me. They ain't gonna take you, you jerk. You're gonna volunteer. Can I finish the game? Oh. You would have won again. Hey, Miles. All you gotta do is say no.
That's it. That's all there is to it. Like that, huh? Just like that. It's kind of like a little toy. No, no. No, not at all. Oh, I, I mean with the light and buzzer thing, it's... Like something I got for Christmas once when I was a kid. <laughs> well, the light and bell arrangement has nothing to do with the probe as such. It is just an aid for me to record the experiment. And you mustn't worry about how long you press the buzzer. I have installed a special built-in cut-out device to prevent you from injuring yourself. Oh. <laughs> Looks like you thought of everything. Oh, yes, yes, I think so. <laughs> well. Well. Let's do it. All right, Max. Now, we start off with the feeder wire. Ah, this is really just a great big extension cord. It is much more awkward than the radio-controlled component, but um, I, I trust it more. It's <laughs> old-fashioned, I guess. Yeah. He said you're married, didn't you, Miles? No, I'm divorced. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. Ah, look, uh, don't press that buzzer until I give you the word. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, hey, Doc. Uh, well, uh, you're not going to be doing any of this zapping yourself, are you? I mean, unless I push the button, nothing's going to happen, right? Look, my... You have to push... You have to push the button yourself. I mean, if... If I press it... The whole experiment doesn't make sense. Well, you knew that, didn't you? Hmm? I'm sorry, Doc. It's just, just that wire kind of psyched me out, that's all. I feel like a robot. <laughs> Plugged in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, plugged in. Everything squared away. <laughs> yes, everything squared away. <laughs> and stand back, baby. <laughs> Don't fire, you see the whites of the thighs. <laughs> it again and if you feel like it miles miles what do you feel it feels very funny. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's like an itch, sort of. Yeah, like an itch. Oh, it doesn't bother me at all, you know. It feels nice. What is it, itch, Miles? Uh, all over. I, I, I can't pin it down. It's, it's like I'm in a glove. In a glove. Yeah, big fur-lined glove. Go on. Come on, Miles. No. I. Uh, it's so warm. Yeah, I feel warm. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's hot. Is it 
better, worse? I don't know. It's just different. Are you able to isolate the area with a stronger sensation? Yeah. My crotch. But he was everywhere at once, you know? Oh, boy, I got to think about this. Miles, you seem a bit upset. Yeah, well, look, Doc. I mean, there was an awful lot going on just now, you know? Why, why don't you just go away for a while? Yes. Yes, of course. yourself, did you? <laughs> what do you think of this new plate? It looks all right. It's too far interior. Most positive. It looked all right on the earlier plates. How can you be sure that this one's right and others are wrong? I can't. But he is living proof that something is wrong. He's still refusing food. Mm. And he hasn't had one minute's sleep since he started pressing that button. Miss Miles. What do you think you're doing here? Hello, Reese. Getting back to the ward. What have you done with Miles? I take you back to bed, Reese. Reese. Reese, go Come back to the ward. Miles? Reese, back. Is that you, Miles? Reese. Is that you? You're ready to Get away from me! Change me, empower me. Christ, I'm worse than wrong. What are you doing, Miles? What are you doing? This, this won't help, Reese. Where's the power? Uh. Uh, 
All right, inside, private! You really put me on the spot, Reese. I don't like that. Try to be nice to somebody, give him a pill, some good advice, huh? What do you get? Huh? Abuse! Come on, Sam, give me a break. I gotta get out of here. Not a chance. I gotta look after myself. Besides, I warned you, didn't I? Huh? Don't swim upstream! Come on, man. You really lost me up with that major, man. You don't understand. Hey, man. I ain't that lousy doctor. He don't mean nothing. It's that major! And you, he's gonna take me apart just because of you, you filthy, lousy creep! It's just a bar of soap, Chief. Soap in a sock. Hurts like hell, don't it? <laughs> of course, only using self-defense. We get a lot of weirdos around here, you know? What I could do with a whole lot less of them? Shannon, they own you. How does this feel? But at least I had a choice. That's more than I can say for you. <laughs> Shannon. somehow. Shannon, are you all right? Major! Major! to listen to me, Doctor. After miles. When our official friends learn about this fiasco, they'll slice us to ribbons to save their asses. And the rest of the world is just looking for a story about the evils of modern technology. So they'll feed us to them. And you'll be the monster. Let me... Let me think about this for... We'll discuss it later. Have you forgotten about your intuitive factory? Reese, you're mad, he despises me. Well, you saw what he did, he's obviously psychotic. And you yourself have described him as hopelessly paranoid. That suggestion is obscene. Oh, come on, doctor. Well, you've been holding him in reserve ever since the experiment started. Go ahead, deny it if you can. I took it because I thought he would volunteer. He's a perfect psychological type. I thought he would leave with it. Well, a judge of human character, you are not. I will not take him against his wishes. You won't have to. Face it, Doctor, you work more as a scientist than a scapegoat. Well, more as a colonel than as a major. <laughs> You're damn right. I'd be the first colonel in the history of the United States Army with more brains than bullshit. All right, Doctor, now how do we measure Reese? From what you say right now, he's not even any good to himself. But by tomorrow, he could be the biggest breakthrough ever achieved in the treatment of mental illness. Or dead. Well... Frankly, who'd miss him? Who'd miss him? Oh, indeed. God help lonely people. Thank you. 
Hedger. Why don't you volunteer? <laughs> You're serious? Any volunteer is preferable to a conscript. Well, I'll tell you what, Doctor. As soon as you get the bugs worked out, I'll be the first in line. We go with Reese. If you get him to sign. I'll see the appropriate papers immediately. must be very pleased. What did you expect? You volunteered? I didn't volunteer for anything. Or at least for? Mm-mm. Your signature? Sure you did, Reese. You signed the release along with all those other papers the night you were admitted with a broken arm. Please. You bastard. You needed volunteers to work with. So I gave the general order that all patients admitted to the hospital with mentally disturbed backgrounds were to be given the necessary forms to fill out for release. As simple as that, and quite legal. You bastard. Oh, come on, Doc. The button, Reese. Well, what do you say, Doctor? You think you have the right to ask me to push this? I'm sick of hearing about rights. I've been involved in every classic problem in medical morality, and I'm tired. Today, I go by only one rule. That is to cure those diseases that I cannot prevent. And that goes for diseases of the mind. But I have nothing to cure, you know that, Miles. He's dying anyway. I'm not even sick. You jeopardized his life on two occasions. I'm not a criminal, if that's what you're saying. But you're violent. You're lonely, confused. Frightened. Thoroughly unhappy. Oh, man. You don't like what you see? Look the other way. Those things you just called me, they're conditions, states of being. They're not crimes or diseases. They're not sins. They're not even fixed and constant things inside me. You can't burn them away like warts. You, you, you don't just cut them out. No, but you can override them. The way that certain drugs override pain. Well, why? Because they're not pretty to look at? Because that side of reality makes people uncomfortable? Jesus, doctor, I need those things. I don't love pain, but it defines me. It's part of what I am. Who are you to come along and, and, and just erase that? I'm not trying to justify our methods. How can I when they are repugnant to me? But the fact is, I can help you. take this thing out of my head. You gotta be out of your mind, you know. You can't change me. You wouldn't know where to begin. I am James H. Reese. And you know what else I am? I am unique. You are the brother to three billion men. Can you deny them a better form of existence? Choose it on your son? I have no son. That's not what you told Miles. Then I was misconstrued. My son is dead. He's very like you in many respects. One day he walked into his room and shot himself through the head. That's too bad. If he stuck around, you might have brought him happiness. A piece of wire, a spark of electricity, this peace.
push the button. I'm such a small man, Doctor. You do it. Push the button. your life, Hitler. That belongs to my good friend, Dr. Frederick. He of the golden tongue. Well, go on, Doctor. You made it. You play with it. Look, I'm all set to be sacrificed for the good of humanity. Why the hesitation? You're afraid to get your hands dirty? Look at me. I know you. I see you. I know what's bothering you, mister. You're worried about my epitaph, aren't you? Well, shit, man, that's the least I can do for a man who's going to rid me of my shabby little self. How about this? Here lies... What's his name? He wasn't so unique. Go on, push the button. Go on. Push that button. I feel sorry for you. I really do. All right, the debate is over. If you won't do it, I will. This, of course, is our man of the hour, Dr. Frederick. Oh, uh, by the way, there'll be coffee and donuts served in the foyer after the questioning period. Hmm. Welcome back from Washington, Doctor. Doctor, what were Corporal Reese's first words? What do you think he felt, Doctor? What did he see? Just God. God? That's all? Just God? I don't know. It may have been a visual experience. Just don't know. Could you describe his expression? Would you say he looked happy? Well, why don't you meet Corporal Reese for yourselves? Ladies and gentlemen, not long ago, this man was a hopeless and violent schizophrenic. But you see him now. Tell him how you feel, Corporal. I feel fine. Just fine. Corporal Reese, do you ever feel unhappy or depressed? No, never. What about anger? Don't you ever get angry? No. Not anymore. I think I'll be revealing a happy fact when I tell you that Corporal Reese talked to the president on the telephone and he received a decoration. What did the president say to Corporal? He asked me how I felt. What did you tell him? I told him I felt fine. Tell me, Corporal, how did it feel speaking on the telephone with the president? 
It was the happiest day of my life. Thank you, Corporal. Thank you very much. Major, we've heard through the grapevine that you're due to make Colonel because of this project. What was your role in it? From a military point of view, I was in charge of the project, and I'm a personal friend of the doctor's. But all the credit belongs to him. And I must say, he did one hell of a job. Major, what is the military's interest in this experiment? The military is always interested in the betterment of mankind. Doctor, have many failures preceded your success? There were no failures. Every step was successful in varying degrees. What are your plans for the immediate future, Doctor? It's up to the military now. No pulling out experiments, Doctor? First, he's going fishing. <laughs> have the Russians been working in this area? Yes, though all indications are that we hold a substantial lead over them. Do you think they'll have better results uh, than the heart transplants? Well, anything is possible. Well, that's it for now. Coffee and donuts. Just one more, Major. Doctor, what does this mean to the man in the street? 